So today we're looking at Pasco's basic uh, modular circuits kit. And uh, this is the kit here. So it comes with two layers of these, uh, what we're calling modules. Um, first layer is this, uh, this is the second layer. Um, these are like your connecting modules. Um, these are the jumpers, I'll show you how those work. Um, and then we have other types of modules here. This is like the light bulb, capacitor, battery. Uh, this is a springs one, so you can actually drop in your own like wire resistor here. Um, it comes with some switches. And uh, we have two resistors, one up here, one up here. And this is the second battery module. So I'm going to take these modules out and uh, put together a simple circuit. And I'll show you how that looks in just a second. So this is an example of a very uh, simple circuit. Um, we have power and um, a light bulb. So what happens is when we connect these, uh, we can assume that the light bulb will turn on. And um, one of the um, the things here, so I'll show you how these connect, but also I want to explain, I'm actually going to re replace this circuit for this, which is a switch. And that way I can control um, very easily the power going to the bulb. So the way these modules fit in, they just tuck right into each other using um, you know these two groups here. So I'm going to go ahead and put these together. And once these are all together, all right, we actually have to do the physical connection. So that's what these uh, tabs are for, is where we insert these. Because as you see right now, of course, nothing's happening. And we want students to be able to have like this understanding that, hey, they're actually doing a, uh, they're making the connection. So that's why um, you know, we designed it this way. Um, also, which uh, one thing which I'll show you later on is we're going to be able to connect like a, uh, some type of meter or voltage meter multimeter um, to these posts here so that we can get readings off as well um, at any point in the circuit. So here let me put my last one here and there we see the light bulb turned on and uh, again very simple just here's my switch on and off. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually replace this with the light bulb and just to show you what um, now we're looking at series resistance so let me go ahead and do that. So if you're watching this video, you can probably see that um, compared to before, the light bulb is actually dimmer uh, now than it was before. And um, we have these, uh, of course, wired in series. So the next step, I'll show you these wired in parallel uh, using some uh, the modules. So I'll go ahead and set that up. And uh, yeah, if you're watching this video, you can fast forward or rewind and you can see uh, compare the differences in the brightness. Now with this circuit, we can actually see we have two branches. Um, I have a light bulb here, light bulb here. And um, in this example, the light bulbs are, uh, they're set in parallel, uh, meaning they have a common node here and a common node here. Um, the top bulb isn't on because I put this switch here and, and I wanted to show you that, um, oh, well, you know, we can ask our students what's going to happen if we close the circuit and uh, both bulbs are connected. And we'll see the brightness is really about the same. Can't tell. And I'll show you the same example with them um, in parallel where we have a switch that connects the two so you can show the difference. So one of the nice things about modular circuits is that students can come up with their own ways on how to put a circuit together. Um, this uh, particular example, I'm actually trying to show two bulbs in series, but um, I want to have the option of bypassing this bulb. All right, so what I'm doing is um, I actually have, you'll see I have two pads here, right? I have a switch. So I can, if I push, you know, if I leave the switch up, then the, the power goes to this loop right here. Now, if I close the switch, um, what I'm hoping is, you know, the electricity will go through the path of least resistance and it'll bypass this bulb here. Not bypass, but you know, it'll most of the energy will travel this way. So let me go ahead and turn this circuit on. Actually, let me pick the switch up. Let's, let's see what happens when they're in series again. So we'll see the bulb is pretty dim. And uh, if we want to demonstrate what just one bulb on should look like, let's go ahead and close the switch. And we'll see this one turned off, and this one got brighter. Let's do that again.
So here we can see the difference um, when the bulbs are in uh, series versus before when they were in parallel. So now to look at a more advanced example. Um, here I have a circuit with a capacitor and a light bulb. Right, uh, of course my power here, and I have a couple different branches that I can use the switch to select from. So we'll see that if I move the switch down, right, the power is going to go through here. If I pull the switch up, the power is going to go through the top. So let's see what this does. Um, again, a capacitor and a light bulb, so let me go ahead and close the switch, and let's take a look at what's happening here. So we see that the light bulb, it got really bright and then it's just dimming slowly. All right, so what's happening here is that the capacitor is charging. And the way we know that it's charging um, is that we can actually prove that it's storing power by just flipping the switch the other way. Okay, so I'll do that and watch the light bulb. See, it had still a little tiny bit there. But the power from the capacitor was actually going through the light bulb. Um, and in this circuit with the switch, we can actually see that the battery was completely disconnected from uh, the rest of the circuit. And we can actually take it one step further and attach um, a wireless voltage sensor. And we can actually prove this as well on, the, on our computer. So let me go ahead and just connect this. Let me get a screen set up here. <clears throat> so one of the benefits of modular circuits, the reason we have these um, tabs here, these are to connect like a mul multimeter or some type of device to, to, to monitor the voltage. Um, with the multimeter, it's going to be hard to track um, the changes, but with our device here, I'll show you. So once it's connected, I just select graph. Okay, and I'm going to press start. And we're going to do the same thing, is I'm going to bring the switch down. And that's the capacitor charging. And now if I toggle the switch up, we can see the graph of the capacitor discharging. So this is where we can actually use sensors um, along with modular circuits to uh, show some more advanced things. I mean, we can do two ways. We can, of course, you, you know, use a light bulb to see this, but we can also use a graph to see what the curve itself looks like. And um, like another way I can do this is I can actually, you know, let's, let's see what the, the power of the light bulb looks like. So we see the capacitor is going up and then curve down. And let me do and stop and start this. So now I'm going to connect the batteries here and let's see what happens. So we have that same thing, right? That's the power over the bulb. And then when I discharge the capacitor, there is the power dissipating over the light bulb. And that's a more advanced example using uh, modular circuits with uh, an additional sensor here. So there's a basic overview on uh, modular circuits and how it works. Um, what I showed you was just a um, handful of, of examples. Um, I'm sure with the other components, um, you can, you know, your students can create their own or you can learn other concepts. Um, if you add a, some kind of a voltage meter or um, multimeter digital oscilloscope, something, you can also do um, other examples. Um, so there you have it. Thanks for watching.